looking for something. A new way, a new understanding, a connection, some comfort. You've got questions, and Light on Living puts the spotlight on all the answers so you can shine. Lift and lighten the load of life's challenges and learn simple and easy ways to live a healthy, happy life. You'll gain insight and start to see things in a new way that motivates you. You're invited to hear new, see different, and feel more as Lisa shines the light on living. Hello and welcome everyone to Light on Living. I'm your host, Lisa Berry. And today's show is one of my favorite topics on the planet other than cats, because we are here talking about food, but not just regular food. This is going to be a real fun one. Um, when I think about food, I, there's so many how does food make me feel? How does, you know, the food, is it prepared? What does it taste like? What I'm always looking, I'm always excited about food, but our guest today has really offered people a new way of eating, a new way of thinking about food and really a lifestyle around the food. So I'm going to welcome our guest, Candice, right away. But just before that, Candice, hang on there. I'm going to read her bio so everybody knows who we are talking with. I love this. I love this. So everybody, please let me introduce you to Candace, who is the face of the Edgy Veg. And she is on a journey to revolutionize how we think about food, eco-conscious living, and feminism. Author of the cookbook, 138 Carnivore Approved Vegan Recipes, Candace delivers vegan recipes with attitude and comedy. Edgy by nature. I love that. Edgy by nature, both her popular YouTube channel and Instagram pages have disrupted the vegan community with her candid and humorous take on activism, not only for animals, but food, food built differently, but also mental health, the environment and female empowerment. I mean, Candace, welcome. You pack a punch in there. <laughs> having me yeah that is quite a bit of a mouthful read back to me <laughs> <laughs> it's always fun to hear what you what you're doing because yes my 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 first question always is going to kind of come out and say oh yeah what you know why are you a chef but really well I want to start with this why have you chosen to do more with being a chef uh, for me, it was really, uh, I went vegan and needed to teach myself how to cook. I needed to eat, and I was always a foodie, so I knew that if, you know, I was going to continue this lifestyle that I had chosen, I had to be able to eat the food that I loved. So um, for me, it's, uh, I love animals, and, uh, you know, I, 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 I truly believe that we can eat with compassionate choices and without, um, you know, any cruelty to them. So that's kind of why I started with that. Oh, I love that. So it was more, it was a, um, it was a heart-based choice versus, or did you have any allergies or like health issues that led you to this choice? Yeah, it was a little bit of both. So I had a lot of issues growing up health-wise in terms of, you know, skin issues. Um, I got a lot of migraines. And um, it really was a dairy intolerance, um, not full fledged, but it would definitely cause migraines. So even as a child, I never really drank or ate a lot of dairy um, for that reason. And, you know, my mom switched from cow's milk to goat's milk when I was younger, because we still, you know, we were raised that you need your milk to be big and strong. So that was kind of the main driving force was from a very young age. I just dairy was always an issue for me. And so did you even like that? Like, um, I'm thinking of myself going, oh, you know, one thing people are obviously thinking, oh, my gosh, what I have to give up cheese, too. So did you even like dairy or, or cheeses and things that were made with it? Oh, I love dairy. <laughs> I, grew up, uh, <laughs> I grew up in a um, in a predominantly more European household. My mother's German. So, I mean, for breakfast some days, it was just bread and cheese. And I love cheese. And uh, so that was really difficult for me. And for some reason, we just didn't make the connection when I was younger that, you know, is the cheese might also be causing it <laughs> as well as the right. milk. Um, right. But, uh, yeah, when I was about uh, 19, 20, I started to really, really take note of what was causing these ridiculous migraines that would last three days at a time. And every time I cut out animal proteins, they would disappear. 
So you're really so starting kind of to notice sense. that link. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, so you mentioned that you were a foodie already. Um, tell me about that part. Of what what draw, draws you to food? What excites you about food? Yeah, so I grew up um, the first few years of my life in Germany. As I mentioned, my mother was uh, German, so I have family there. And uh, they lived in a part of Germany that was very rural. So a lot of farmers, a lot of wine farmers, a lot of um uh, you know, vegetables, that sort of thing. So my grandparents always had a farm and grew their own vegetables. And so I was raised around fresh, beautiful ingredients from a really young mm. age. And because of the nature of Europe, I mean, we were constantly traveling. We were going to Italy for summer vacation. And so I was exposed to a variety of different types of food from a really young age. Um, mm. And I just, I fell in love with the culture of food, the way it brings us together, the nostalgia, the memories that it brings when, you know, you share a meal and, you know, you have those, I mean, we know this, like uh, memories are triggered a lot of the time by smells, so the smells, the taste. I was really enamored and very passionate by that side of food from a really young age. That's, and actually, too, I'm, I'm assuming your grandparents and just people around the culture would be talking about the food like you'd have a relationship with the food and understand when it's grown and how it's grown and what works well with others. So do you, because I love that you said you were exposed to a variety of food. Um, and in that exposure, did you get those lessons about, you know, oh, this is grown this time of the year because of this? Like, was there a deeper relationship with it? Absolutely. And not only just, you know, the kind of science behind when, what the times the things are grown, but also the hard work that goes into the food. I mean, mm. I would help my, my opa in the gardens, you know, we would hoe mm. up the, the potatoes, we would pick lettuce and bring it down to my, to my grandmother, my oma, and she would make, you know, a fresh salad made out of lettuce that I picked out of the garden. So I was exposed to the hard work around food, which I feel that we take advantage of a lot of the time. Um, you know, we kind of forget how much work goes into the food that we're going into the grocery store and just kind of picking up from a shelf or a fridge and buying. So I definitely learned those, like, hard knock <laughs> life lessons associated with food from a super young age. That is so, I love that you said that. It's so important because as we, we're doing the work, like you were, like you said, hoeing the potatoes and picking the lettuce and you see that work, you have that, again, a deeper relationship and understanding. Do you think that that helps, not, not just you, but if other people in the world did more of that, do you think that, like here's a food activist kind of thing on a different level, but do you think that would actually help reduce waste, waste of food? I think so because I think that then you have a respect for food. Um, something that I was always raised with was a respect for food and, you know, nothing goes to waste. I mean, my grandparents being of that kind of like old world European life that they grew up with, they lived through wars. Um, I just, I was taught a lot of those lessons and they used everything. I mean, they would use the leftover berries to make juices and, and wines and peels. They would rub with oil and then make like a totally different dish out of potato peels and that sort of thing. So I think that oh, wow. if you are taught, yeah, if you are taught those lessons at a really young age or just even now go out and learn them, yeah. <laughs> um, you definitely have a respect for food that really you know, makes you feel guilty with you when you're wasting Yes. <laughs> Yes, as opposed to people, you know, when you're little and them saying other people are starving in the world. Now you're really thinking it's it's even closer to home. It, it's I, you can see that it's it's waste and it's going there. So this is so interesting because then you you ate meat then growing up and then this the switch came based on like around a dairy thing and the migraines. But then you took it a step further and went vegan, vegan, like completely vegan. Um, was that an easy choice for you? It was an easy choice from um, kind of an animal standpoint for me. Again, I grew up in the country. I grew up around farms. So I always grew up around farmed animals. So I, again, it's a respect thing, mm -hmm. I think, for me. Um, I had respected those farm animals from such a young age, and I was exposed to them at a really young age, which I don't think a lot of people now are. They don't really mm -hmm. make the connection between – a living being like a dog or a cat it's the same type of thing yeah. um and then their food right so for me um that part was easy it was navigating my life 
with this new lifestyle mm-hmm. that was really difficult because I went vegan 10 years ago. So we didn't have all these beautiful, delicious substitutes that we have now. And it's not, it wasn't a topic that was really talked about a lot. And if it was, there was a lot of stigma behind it. A lot of, you know, hippie, dippy, like green and brown meals. That was kind of the conversation that everyone was having, that it was gross, <laughs> that vegans are frail. So from that standpoint, it was very difficult. Um, I felt very isolated at the beginning. I felt um, left out in a lot of, you know, uh, family situations, a lot of social situations, because it just wasn't a thing back then. Mm -hmm. I I remember these times too. And even myself, I I remember trying to do that switch over and like, wow, they're just, and I really did not know how to cook myself back then either. And I just thinking, gosh, am I literally going to just live off carrot, you know, carrot sticks and celery sticks. And the fancy thing back then was hummus. I mean, now there's, there's, we've come so far. Um, and I, that's (laughs) just that you mentioned about, um, vegans are frail. I would love to say, how do you feel right now? Like you're, do you feel healthy and robust and your vitality is out there? (laughs) Yeah, I mean, despite everything else happening in the world, I feel great. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I mean, I wake up every day and, you know, I have my, I did a workout this morning, a fasted workout, and then had this huge giant smoothie and I feel incredible right now. And, And I truly believe that, you know, there is that kind of like body mind connection when it comes to just eating more healthfully which i mean obviously there's a lot of vegan junk foods out there and uh you know you can make them at home yourself but for the most part if you're eating a a whole foods plant-based diet i mean you're you're literally putting life into your body so i i would say 95 percent of the time i feel great i get sick Mm -hmm. like anybody else um but you know i i do feel good and i feel better and that's nice. <laughs> I didn't always feel this way. <laughs> but I, I love that you bring up that there, there's also junk food as well, because a lot of people think, that, okay, just because you've chosen not to eat animal, um, animals, animal themselves, uh, that, you know, it's going to be just all vegetables. But yeah, you can, you can really go sideways on these as well too. And, and I know that you have like 138 recipes in your book. Um, do you, is, was your plan with the book, or you can share with me with your book, um, was it to just let people know that they can do this? There's options and junk food or healthy food or all foods. Like, do you include all of it in there? Yeah, I included all of it. So there's um, some really indulgent deep fried mm-hmm. stuff. And then there's some he- more healthful items as well. And the book also ranges from like easy beginner recipes to more advanced cooking. Um, and it was just to show that, you know, vegan food isn't just a kale salad and a smoothie or oatmeal. Yeah. Like, it can be you know, technically very interesting. It can, you know, be flavorful and decadent and sweet and rich, Um, but then it also can be very healthful. And I just, I really wanted to showcase the variety of vegan foods available and then cater to the average, let's say eater, if you will. (laughs) So the book really is not just for vegans and vegetarians, it's for anyone. And that's why I called it carnivore approved vegan recipes because you don't have to be vegan to like them. It's just good food. It's not good food for vegan food. It's just good food. Yes, it is just good food. And I, I was watching actually one of your videos this morning and I loved that one that I chose that you, you were talking about, used cardamom. And that is just, I, I'm just throwing an example here for people is that I, you, no one has to be a vegan to have cardamom. You don't have to, you know, be a meat eater to have these spices and make your food delicious. And I think that's, is, is, would you say your, one of your main goals is more to help people get, like introduce them to becoming vegan or is it just to more to be eating healthy? Uh, I would more lean on introducing veganism to yes. just the average human being. For me, you know, I'm not the healthiest eater. I, if I'm perfectly honest, I'm really not. I don't, you know, count my macros. You know, I, I love indulgent food, but I still feel good despite eating, let's say, very indulgently sometimes. So for me, it's just, you know, giving people a taste of something that's really delicious but happens to be vegan, which hopefully then will stick with them. It might spark a conversation or spark them to do a little bit more research or consider even a couple times a week, you know, swapping out a animal 
um, ingredient meal for a vegan version. It's it's all about just introducing the general population for me and, and really trying to uh, break those stigmas that vegans and vegan food has endured for so many years. Yes. Oh my gosh. And I'm going to try to squeeze this question in before the commercial break because I think it's important right now is would you regard yourself then as a food activist? Oh, absolutely. I always say that, you know, my, my form of um, activism is leading with a fork. So just, you know, just try it. <laughs> it's delicious. <laughs> and maybe that will, you know, subconsciously six months down the road, maybe then you're at a restaurant and you're like, oh, there's a vegan option. I remember that one thing I had that was really good that was vegan. So this could be just as delicious. Those are the types of connections I want to make for people. Oh, I love that. I love that. Well, everybody, I want to remind you that we are here speaking with the edgy veg, Candice, um, Candice Hutchings. And as we're, when we come back, what I really want to dive into is I think it's so fabulous. I know people know you are ready and recognize you from your YouTube channel, which is super fun. It's like a really fun channel just to hang out on, to be honest with you, I find. And so <laughs> thank you. When we, come, when we come back, I'd love to um, just dive into your YouTube channel and what people are going to get when they come visit you there. So everybody, come on back and listen to us with the Edgy Veg. Best of the holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Om Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Om Times endeavor. Host your show with Om Times Radio Network. Hi, this is David Strickle. I'm excited to share my brand new show, The Stream of David Live, right here on Om Times Radio. Each week, I'll have exciting guests, and I'll channel the eternal wisdom of the stream, a group of non-physical entities whose teachings have transformed lives all over the world. So join us for an uplifting hour each Monday at 5 p.m. Eastern. That's the stream of David Live right here on Ohm Times Radio. Are you considering starting your own podcast? Do you have a book or other content you'd like to share with a worldwide audience? Give your book a voice. Hello, I'm Lisa Berry, host of Light on Living here on Ohm Times Radio. Myself and Tomas Garza, host of Decide to Transform, help people like you produce your very own radio show. At Podcast Prosperity, we help you create your show and recirculate your content for multimedia impact. Through creation and launch, we give you the support and mentorship you need and help you create the influence, income, and impact that you desire. Contact us at lightonliving.com, Podcast Prosperity. A social distancing tip. Putting distance between yourself and others is critical to slowing the spread of coronavirus. So here are ways to stay in contact without the physical contact part. Call, send a text, set up a video conference, post on social media, dedicate a song on the radio. If you have symptoms of fever, dry cough, and shortness of breath, call your health care provider before going to their office. For more info, visit coronavirus.gov. Let's all do our part because we're all hashtag alone together. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Well, thank you everyone for joining us here on Light on Living. I am oh, having a really like my, I feel like it's food for my soul kind of conversation here with the edgy veg, Candace Hutchings. And as we like are getting to know a little bit more about you, and I'm really glad that I got introduced to you because now, like you, you just introduce us to so many different easy ways of, I, I love healthy food, so it's, it's fun, but I like all kinds of foods. And as you are a vegan and are letting people know that, you know, just try it. I love that. Just try it. Um, what, why do you think there is a general aversion to eating vegan? Is it just because we've been conditioned to, to be eating animals and animal byproducts? I think so. I think for a lot of us, it's just, it's, it's, 
threatening a way that we've always just existed. Um, and mm. the idea that something is made to taste or look like something else is just weird or bizarre or why yeah. do it? And I think that that's a lot of it. And then, of course, it's, you know, it, it's all the stuff that we've seen in media or stereotypes we've seen on the Internet or been told for years and years and years. It's just conditioning, right? Vegan food is gross. And look at this brown millet bowl, <laughs> that sort of thing. So now we're just, I think we're coming to realize as a society and through, you know, all these beautiful accounts on Instagram and blogs on the Internet that, you know, it's just fruits and vegetables seen in a completely different way. You love fruits and vegetables, mm. so why not try something vegan? And I think that that's uh, kind of where we're at now. I love that, seen in a different way. It's just fruits and vegetables are seen in a different way. <laughs> That's <Right>? awesome. <laughs> now, um, we're talking about, you know, vegan and stuff. Do you also go heavily organic or all organic? I try to. Um, I definitely pick and choose. You know, I do use the kind of um, the rule, like the dirty dozen type of rule when it comes yes. to um selecting what I choose to buy organic and what I choose not to just because I want to be relatable to my audience. So, you know, mm -hmm. not everyone can afford organic all the time. Sometimes it's not available. And then I really try for me, what's more important than buying organic is buying local. So if I have organic, uh -huh. let's say from Mexico or local from Ontario where I live, I'd rather choose the conventional local option. Um, and that's just, you know, a personal choice that I make um, to support local, but also it's better for the environment because it wasn't put on a truck and brought over and, and that sort of thing. So for me, local is more important than organic, but I do try to get organic as much as I possibly can and as much as I can afford. I love that. And that's where the, the eco-conscious living comes in, right? Like what you're saying about not just the footprint, but yes, yeah, supporting local and, and it tastes so good, right? In season is just so tasty and yum. And it feels right for your body. I think you're, do you, do you, do you have a, a theory about your body? Does it feel better when you eat in season? It does. It definitely does. And, and not only does it feel better, the food just tastes better like an in-season fruit or vegetable just tastes so much more beautiful and robust and has such a depth of flavor compared to you know tomatoes you buy in I don't know January <laughs> I was just ideally. thinking about a tomato sandwich <laughs> when you said that that's so fun <laughs> Yes, the, yeah, it's just it's more it's chock full of this extra. I love that depth of flavor. That is such a perfect thing. Now you've mentioned your audience a couple of times, so that's what I want to dive into right now. Is that you have your own YouTube channel now? When did you launch this? So that was launched in 2010. Um, oh my gosh. Or 2011, actually. I started my blog in 2010. I started the YouTube channel in 2011. And then it's just kind of been a slow ride since then. It's really picked up in the last, I would say, four or five years. And I've been doing it now full time for three years, which is pretty incredible. I get to live my dream every single day and wow. do what I love, which is a lot of really hard work, but it's so incredibly rewarding. Oh my gosh, I, I hadn't realized that. That is, that is a great story in and of itself. And then choosing this area, how come, with, why do you think that the YouTube in the last couple of years has picked up so much that you, you can take it to a full time? Um, I think people are just angry. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. I have two oh, tiny okay. loud dogs. <laughs> Um, I think people are just hungry for knowledge mm. and they want to turn to someone that they can relate to. For me, I'm learning about cooking these different dishes the same way my audience is. I mean, we're going through this experience together. So mm. I think that that has a lot to do with it. Just, you know, having someone more accessible to you also at a time when it's convenient for you to watch. So you don't need to, you know, tune in at four o'clock to watch Pierre, the French chef on TV, you can watch Pierre, the French chef on YouTube, whatever you want. And I think that um, it kind of took that whole model of food entertainment that let's say the uh, Food Network was kind of pushing, yeah. kind of going from cooking shows to food entertainment. I think it, it brought that, that really came to life during or on YouTube. I think uh, you just different ways of experiencing food. 
Yes. Do you, uh, do you find, because this is so interesting. I like, I like when I was watching you, I was like, okay, she's doing this. And you really use the camera effectively. Like you're showing, this is what it looks like. I use this. You can use that. Um, and you're walking through details. Do you find that um, in your comments or the people when they're emailing any questions, that certain questions pop up a lot? Like you're like, oh, wow, this, these people really have this question all the time. Yeah. And it's a lot of, um, you know what the most asked? question is actually is why if you don't if you hate meat why do you try to make food look like meat that's actually the biggest question that I get I get that on like any video any video (laughs) that I put out even if I make banana bread (laughs) um oh my gosh that's something (laughs) right and so that's something that then allows me to have kind of like an educational conversation which is you know a lot of people are vegan not because they hate meat or hate the taste Mm -hmm. of meat because it's because they don't agree with animal agriculture and factory farming so it has nothing to do with meat I don't hate meat from a taste perspective I mean who doesn't love like crispy salty bacon but if I can make an alternative that is just as satisfying and just as good without you know the lack of compassion then why not choose that option so that's definitely something I get constantly but then of course you get the people that are like I'm gluten-free can I make this gluten-free and how do I do it or you know, I have a soy intolerance. How can I do this without soy? So I really try to give as many different variations when I'm sharing a recipe as I can. Um, and then I spend a lot of time in those comment sections just <laughs> educating yeah. or, you know, saying, I haven't tried it, but let me test it out. Or you test it out and let me know how it goes, and I'll make sure to share it on my on my blog in the notes section. So like I said, I mean, I'm not a, a classically trained chef, so I'm always learning. Um, and so is my audience. So it's a fun little experience to do together. I think that is the best, that is the best way to learn, you know, having the interaction and communication with somebody and, and you're right. So many people are going to let you know, like, okay, I have this intolerance and I'm going to share this right away. I have an allergy to onions and it's in like everything. And especially if you go on to more, yeah, like vegan, it's like, okay, there's onion. So I've had to really, you know, do my testing. And so I can imagine like, that'd be like, I would, I'd be posting that comment, of course, on your videos, but you're right. So in your world now, because this is full time to you, three years, actually full time. um, Now I'm just curious, percentage wise of your business, let's say, how much time do you spend in those comments? Um, I used to spend a lot more now. It's, uh, I would say a couple hours every time I put out a new video. So that's twice a week. So I would say about three hours a week. I'm in the comment section just, um, and so that, that allows me to respond to comments on the new video, but then also kind of give a little scroll through, um, for all the older videos to see what else is new. Um, I just, for my own sanity and, and, uh, you know, productivity, I definitely had to limit my time in the comment section. I used to do a couple hours a day and it just, it's not very productive for me and for my own mental health and sanity, because there are definitely some trolls that love to come to my channel. I just, Uh, um, it's better for me to just not engage or read them, you know, every single day. I love that. I love that. And if you don't mind me asking, I, I learned this from you, from you watching your videos, like you really share a lot of personal stuff. And I think that's what people are really connecting with you as well. Like, like I was, and, and you really share with people, like you have some challenging times, you get anxiety, you, you know, you, you have, suffer with depression from time to time. And do you feel, oh, I have to ask this because I, I love food for, for moods. Like I can't wait. I literally wake up and go, Oh my gosh, what's in the fridge? What can I make? I love choosing like what I'm feeding my cats. <laughs> Like it's so exciting to me. And so do you, do you find that food helps with, um, depression or can it trigger like going into depression or does it always help you? And is it always your goat? Like, um, like a, like a comfort, I don't mean comfort food, but like a comfort doing this. Yeah, it absolutely is. I mean, for me, my, my depression and my anxiety is definitely getting a lot better, Um, and I wouldn't, I don't know if it has to do really with diet. I definitely notice that if I have a lot of sugar or processed foods, I definitely make myself more vulnerable to, you know, being irritable, which then, you know, kind of has a domino effect with everything else with the anxiety and depression and and so forth. And I'm very hypoglycemic. So for me, if I don't eat, I become very, very irritable and very anxious. Um, so for me, I definitely, if I do notice that I have a couple of days where my depression is especially terrible, 
I start to really look back and go, okay, what was I eating? Was I eating a lot of sugar? Was I eating a lot of processed Mm. foods, you know, or was I not eating? And food definitely, I think, um, can kind of make or break that for me some weeks. Um, I'm very sensitive, um, like in my body when it comes to that sort of thing. So, I mean, Mm. in the winter, I definitely try to eat um, more walnuts, which are great for, what, what do they call them? Nature's Valium. <laughs> it's close to the selenium. Or, yeah. 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 It's which which elevates brain. your mood. And, and I do try to um, supplement in the winter with a lot of uh, D, D3, which is, you know, great for my depression. So I think what you're putting into your body definitely has a huge shift. But then also I get excited about yes. making certain things and eating certain things. So that definitely lifts up my <laughs> depression as well. I think that's what it is, like just the excitement and 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 knowing that you're helping people. Like, have have you had a lot of people comment that you have been a key person, like a role model for helping them to maybe either go all the way vegan or at least, like you said, switch out a couple meals um, throughout the week. Like, have you have you received oh, those yeah. comments? Oh, I love those comments. I get them. I get them daily. I get a few a day, and it's just it's oh so gosh. wonderful to hear that. People are not only, you know, you are an inspiration to them, which is, a, is great for the ego. <laughs> I'm not going to yeah. lie about that. But also <laughs> that, they're, that they're making a positive change in their life and that it's working for them and that they feel good. And a lot of the time it kind of sparks this passion that they didn't know that they had, whether it's about cooking or, mm-hmm. or a, a new lifestyle or animals um, or just creativity in general. I just love being an inspiration for people to explore something new. Mm, I love that. And that leads me to wondering, I'm so curious, who are some of your, you know, um, whether they're chefs or just um, people cooking with food or or animal people on YouTube that you just love enjoying and watching, get you get inspired by? Yeah, I mean, I have this really great group of vegan girlfriends, plant-based girlfriends, um, over in uh in LA and they're called the vegan view so it's it's like the view but vegan (laughs) and they talk about all kinds of different topics and they're just very relatable women that you know really have a no bs outlook on life and veganism and make it very approachable for people and then of course Gaz Oakley he's in the UK he is a classically trained chef who makes the most elaborate, beautiful dishes vegan. Mm. Um, of course, like everyone else, I love the Bon Appetit channel um, and all of their yes. challenges. They're so good. Cooking with Babish was one of my first obsessions. Um, he creates a lot of kind of fanfare food. Um, Sauce Dash, um, his name is Mark. We make a lot of very similar food. So I love to become like a little mad food scientist. And really use the science of food to create different things. And he does the same thing. So we are constantly doing similar foods. And we'll probably do a collab in the near future and kind of challenge each other. But I love that approach. Like, okay, let's use what I know about food and what I know about science and kind of, you know, why does a yolk taste like a yolk? And what can I use in my vegan arsenal to replicate that? I love that sort of thing. So those are some of my favorites. That is awesome. Actually, you know what? I'm totally going to watch the, um, what you call it? the, the vegan view. I will be tuning in because yeah. I, I think for me, the energy, like when I'm, when I'm pulling food together, I'm a holistic nutritionist. So I, I look at food kind of like, not just the, what does it taste like this? But I go, Oh, okay. In that yolk, I'm going to get my beta carotene or I'm going to get, you know, or, or just the vitamins. Cause I know that it's healing me. And there's something about having exuberance and sharing that energy. So I can only imagine some of these, um, channels that you've mentioned or shows how you're right when we're interested and we understand it can really help propel you along your own journey and i'm so like besides food because it sounds like you know I, I right now i can imagine that oh she's just in the kitchen all the time but you're you're not and so what are some <laughs> what are some other things that you do just for your own you know evolved practices like yoga yeah. do you go walking i mean you have two little dogs you said yeah, I mean, I love, so I I used to do a lot of fitness, and um, when I was younger, it just was for the wrong reasons, and I just, I injured myself quite a bit, you know, doing like a Olympic weightlifting and that sort of thing. Um, oh, wow. So now I, I do a lot of movements. I love dance-inspired Pilates and yoga. 
Um, so it's a little bit harder to do now, <laughs> given the situation, but um, I love to dance. I've been doing, uh, for my own meditation, so I have a really hard time meditating. Um, my ADD just does not allow me to sit there for more than five minutes. <laughs> So I will do that to kind of calm myself down when I have anxiety. But my form of meditation is really getting down and dirty literally with plants. So at my home, oh. we have over 70 plants. Um, we have a beautiful backyard. And I have started, because I needed a hobby that wasn't my job, I have started making these beautiful little terrariums. And for me, just putting on music that I love and just, like, designing these beautiful landscapes and terrariums has been such a practice of meditation for me. And just solitude and sitting with myself and my thoughts. And, and that's kind of when I create and come up with some of my, my best ideas. And, of course, playing with my dogs is such a full-time hobby that I love. <laughs> yes, um, but my partner and working I, from um, home is great. Yeah, it's just that I have two tiny little, we think they're she-poos, we think. They're both rescued, so we're not sure. Um, but Aww. they're just, they're they're kind of the driving force for everything that I do because I just love animals so much. And they're just such beautiful creatures and so compassionate and caring. So, yeah, caring for them is definitely a full-time hobby. <laughs> They are the center of your world. I agree. And I love that you feel that way about them. It's just such a good feeling. Now, we are going to sneak away to our last commercial break. But when we come back, I actually do want to talk to you more about gar like gardening and growing your own, like you said, with the plants and such. So everybody, come on back. We are going to hear more from the Edgy Veg. Best of holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. to celebrate self-discovery and personal growth. But you know, your efforts have to be consistent in order to stay balanced and to overcome depression and fears. So, what new books are available? How do you stay centered? Elizabeth Joyce and her guests will help you find out. That's Elizabeth Joyce on Let's Find Out, Mondays at 6 p.m. on OM Times Radio. So I'm a cat, and I just moved in with this new human, and she's got this little toy she's always playing with, all day long. Tap, 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 bloop, bloop. She can't put it down. There it is. Oh, and get this. She even talks to it. Last week, she asked it for Chinese, and guess what? Egg roll showed up, like magic. Humans have cool toys. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the ShelterPetProject.org. Welcome back, guys, to Light on Living. I'm your host, Lisa Berry, and I'm so loving the conversation that I'm having right now with the edgy veg, Candace Hutchings. And I've got to tell you guys, you've got to get this book. It's called The Edgy Veg Cookbook, 138 Carnivore-Approved Vegan Recipes. And 
Candace, I'm so glad that you just shared that about making your own terrarium. I think I said that right. And I, and now I'm of course going, oh, is she like putting basil plants in there and rosemary or is this, um, are you like planting things that you're using in any of your dishes? So I haven't yet. Um, it's been more just, you know, house plant based, um, but now that it's getting a little bit warmer, I'm definitely going to start growing some herbs as well. Um, we recently just moved into a new house right before, yes. um, you know, COVID-19. So it's been a lot of getting things ready here, but uh, it's a lot of flowers. And I, I'm one of those, like, weird people that saves things from childhood. So I have all these cute little, like, figurines and knickknacks. So I create little, like, scenes oh. for them. It sounds so nerdy, but it's so therapeutic. I love that. Yeah, and, and that rocks is... that I collect outside, and if I'm going for a walk with the dogs and I see, you know, on the, um, not on someone's yard, but in the park, right. if I see, you know, a flower, I'll kind of, like, dig it up, and so I, I can propagate it or plant it in my terrariums, or if I see some rocks that I think are really cool or interesting or some debris that would look good in one, I'll collect it and bring it home. That is so smart. I love that. It's a creation. You're, you're, you're expressing this creative side and weaving through, like you said, childhood memories, things that make you feel good. And I think that's really what we all want with our food. Like we're really, we just want to feel good eating our food and about our food. And one thing, that's why I love that you did this, this cookbook. First of all, I got to dive into cookbook world. Was it just time for you? Like, I got to get this cookbook out. Was there a, did you feel there was a need for it or were other people asking you for this cookbook? Yeah, I'd been asked for a few years to write a cookbook, and I always just saw it as a waste of time. Um, if I'm perfectly honest, I was like, you know what? I have a I have a website. Why would anyone buy my book when you can get my recipes for free online? Um, and then for me, I just it was really important to have certain elements in the book. So when Robert Rose approached me finally, and they're a local Canadian publisher. And so that was important for me too. They're a boutique publisher. So it was very personal and that was important. But when I kind of expressed what I wanted my book to be, which was a printed version of what's on my YouTube channel. And also I wanted a photo for every single recipe. That was super important to me because I have so many cookbooks and if there's no photo, chances are I'm not making that recipe. Yeah. It's just the way that I think most yes. of us are. So um, they came, they approached me and, you know, we did some talking back and forth and then it was just, it was the right time and it was a good fit and Christmas was coming up in a few months. So that was the big timeline for me was just getting it out and ready for Christmas. Um, and it That's was the awesome. same year, it was 2018. So it was the same year that veganism really started to come on the map. Oh, nice. Yeah, right timing for sure. So I love that you said there's a picture for every, and you're so right. It is, that's what gets, sells us, right? We like, I want to make that dish. Or I'm willing to try that one because it looks so good. Is that what, I'll ask you in general, do you feel that is what sets your book apart from other books or is there something different that sets your book apart? I think that one definitely sets me apart is that, you know, it, it it's becoming more common now to have, you know, a photo with every recipe in a cookbook, but um, it's still pretty rare. Um, that, and then also it's funny. It's a book that you can read. It's not just, you know, here oh. is just another description of the flavors that you'll have, you know, the head notes when you, uh, when you flip through a cookbook, there's always the head notes. So it has that, but it also has a story or a joke or a play on words, which is how I talk. I'm, you know, I, I think I'm funny. <laughs> and I really wanted the <laughs> and I really wanted the personality that is portrayed on my YouTube channel, which is, you know, silly and quirky. And and I wanted that to be in the book. And I love dad jokes. I love food puns. So for me, that was super important. So I think that's very different than a lot of cookbooks. Um, you know, you can actually pick it up and read it. I love that. Oh my gosh. Right now I'm thinking, oh, I want to read it just for the food puns now. <laughs> but the, um, so if you had to pick, this is going to be a tough one out of 138. I don't even know how you do this, but I'm going to ask if you had to pick one of the recipes that, that you would think would really convince a carnivore, a pure carnivore, just to, to try and to be open up to becoming vegan, what would that recipe be? And what page was it on? <laughs> no, Ooh, um, I'm not going to be able to tell you what page it's on, but uh, <laughs> I think the ooh, the Thai basil beef is one of my favorite oh. recipes. 
It uses ingredients that you can buy at any grocery store. It's not specialized ingredients. And it's all familiar ingredients. It, it's recognizable, and it's just so good and very easy to throw together as well. Oh my gosh, I want that right now. Okay, <laughs> and I have lots of basil on my on my counter actually. So that sounds delicious already. I've noticed that you have said um, like chana masala. I saw that was one of your favorite. Then you picked up the cardamom, and I thought, does, so is Indian food one of your favorites? Like it sounds like it, but or do you not have a favorite? <laughs> Um, it's, I mean, I have a respect and love for all <laughs> different types of cuisine, but when I first go started going vegan, Indian food and Middle Eastern food was stuff, or, or I guess a cuisine that was already kind of mm. easy to make vegetarian or vegan. They have a lot yeah. of vegetarian dishes already. So when I was first becoming vegetarian and vegan, it was something that I could always go to. So it really deepened my love for that. For those types of cuisines. Easy is the crack in the door, right? It just gets you like, okay, there, my foot's in. It's easy. I can do this. Um, I've got, and okay, I love so spices and flavor, right? So and it, they're yes. just so robust and fragrant, and, and it really helped me to appreciate um, spices. Mm, yes. I actually think that for me, I notice that if, um, if I feel like, God, I'm craving something and I don't know what I could eat all the boring food in the world and I would never be satisfied. But as soon as I have like that sharp bite of garlic or, um, yeah, like, like you said, cardamom and you put that in and I do tea with that. I'm just like, wow, that's so satisfying. It helps with cravings. It's so warming. I, it warms you up. Warming. Yes. Yes. Oh, like a hug, an inside hug, a tummy hug. <laughs> exactly. I was trying to imagine if you had to pick, I don't know if you do this, maybe, you know, walk around going, I would love to, you know, I don't know if the words convert, but you know what, I would love to influence that person or this person to become vegan. Have, if you could pick three people that are, we'll call them celebrities, three celebrities, I'm putting you on the spot, pick three celebrities who you would just love to serve a beautiful vegan meal to just so they could experience it. Who would you pick? Oh, that is a hard question. <laughs> three vegan so, or three people to it's convert or have a meal. Yeah. Non-vegan. Hmm. Oh my God. Who would I choose? Um, okay, so I would choose okay. I'm sure that you listen to a lot of podcasts like I do. Um, one of the podcasts that I'm obsessed with is um, my favorite murder. And mm. the two ladies on there, it's like a, it's a, I love true crime. It's a true crime podcast, but they kind of do it with like a comedic spin and, and they're very feminist. And, um, I would love, cause they always talk about eating so much meat. I would love uh. for them to come over and just have like the funniest, best conversation with them over a vegan meal and just show them how delicious vegan food can be. Because I just, I, I think Karen and Georgia are amazing and I would love for them to be vegan. I <laughs> oh, think that's so fabulous. Wow. You really thought about that one. That was good. Um, and you know, you're right. When people talk about, does that bother you when you do hear when people talk about eating meat and going on about it or when those commercials come out, they're like triple this and that of meat. And uh, yeah, it's, I mean, it doesn't bother me, but um I just think it's misinformation, right? Those kind of like, be a man, eat meat, eat burgers. Like yes. it just, it just kind of continues to push that really toxic stereotype. But then when people are kind of making fun of vegans, um, it doesn't bother me. Everyone can have their opinion. And I just really think it just kind of pushes that more. It just pushes the misinformation that vegan food isn't good. So that's why I'm constantly <laughs> doing what I'm doing. <laughs> Yes, that totally makes sense. Now, so do you, I'm assuming you go out and have meals at other restaurants too. Like you go out and let other people prepare food for you. Do you always let people know I'm a vegan? I can't have this. I can't have that. Or how do you go about doing that? Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, I always do my research before I go. So I don't believe mm -hmm. that I have to go to only vegan restaurants. I can go anywhere. Um, just more mm -hmm. places, some accommodating, some places are accommodating more than others. Um, but for me, I will always research the menu beforehand and kind of know the substitutes that I can make or know what questions to ask. Um, and then when I sit down, I just let them know, you know, I don't eat this or this. And I try to make it easier on the server um, by ha having already read the menu, you know, and, and being able to, to make substitutions or suggest different ways that they can 
um, have the chef make a meal for me <laughs> while also doing that. it in a really respectful way because I think we all know chefs have, you know, their egos and their, their personalities. So um, I like to do it in a really respectful way. I love that. So step one, you pre-read. Step two, you know what you can substitute. And step three, you have questions, you know the questions to ask. Yeah. What? Okay, so here's a fun question. If So say you did that. You, you've already pre-read and you and you've, know your substitutes, but then you think, okay, I do want to ask this. What are the, because I know there are some really um, common questions you would ask. What are some of the questions that really would turn a non-vegan meal into a vegan meal by uh, some simple changes? I mean, butter and milk are super, super yes. easy to substitute, especially with everything that you can buy in the store now. Um, so whenever people say, you know, what's the first, like, what, what do you, what's your first tip for someone who is trying to understand or trying to live a more plant-based lifestyle? You know, what, what's one tip that you can give them? And I always say, take your five to 10 favorite recipes. And just use mm -hmm. store-bought substitutions to substitute the animal products. So if it has milk, then use a soy milk or an almond milk. If it has butter, use, you know, an earth balance or a vegan base cell or something like that. Um, and use what's available to you. If it calls for ground beef, go to the store and buy some ground rounds. So starting them off with that, I think that's the easiest way to get someone's foot in the door, if you will to uh, vegan cooking. I mean, if you, you, it's going to be hard for you to go from zero cooking. Let's say you never cooked and now you've decided to be plant-based. Having, throwing you in there and being like, now make a seitan from scratch is not going to help you. So use what's right. available. <laughs> exactly. Yes. I, you know, so I remember when I stopped using a microwave and I, I thought, oh, that's going to be easy. I don't need to use a microwave. I think I was 19 or 20. And um, I realized that I didn't have a clue how to cook because once I got rid of the microwave, I was like, oh my gosh, I don't even know what I can make. I don't even know what to do and it was like a whole new learning curve but i see what you're saying like okay well don't throw the microwave out like i literally did but you know just say this two meals a day i'm not going to use this i'm going to figure out how to do this differently and, and just by step by step yeah exactly be kind and compassionate can... to yourself don't just be kind and compassionate mm -hmm. to animals be kind and compassionate to yourself and how difficult this can be when you jump in head first mm -hmm. right Oh, that is so sweet. I love that. That is so true. Thank you for saying that. I think a lot of people need to hear that. And I, I know that you said yes, full time on YouTube now, but do, can people like hire you to work with you one on one? Do you you know invite them over to a, a you know chef's table? <laughs> <laughs> so I do mostly consulting um, on the side. So I, I I obviously have my blog and my YouTube channel, but then I work with restaurants on menu consulting. So I can go in and say, hey, you know what? I've taken a look at your menu, and let's say you have a group of 10 people, three of which are vegetarian and one of which is vegan. Well, those people are probably not going to choose your restaurant because you don't have anything interesting for those four people. So I kind of work with them to use um, the dishes that they already have on their menu, the, inspir the kind of see where they draw their inspiration from for the dishes on their menu and the ingredients that they have, and then create really beautiful vegan meals that are exciting to eat. So as a vegan or vegetarian, you're not going into this restaurant and be like, oh, good, the only thing I can have is a salad. Or the only thing I can have mm -hmm. is a stuffed pepper, which I get at every single wedding. So I make it interesting and exciting and something that they <laughs> are excited to try. <laughs> so I, I do a lot of that, um, as well as uh, consulting for, um, you know, just different people that, that want to start a restaurant and, and they really want to see, you know, we want a really good vegan option, but we, we, our chefs don't know how to tackle that. You know, can you give us some easy substitutes? So I will go in and consult kind of one-on-one -on -one with the, with the, uh, with the chef and the restaurant owner that way. What a cool thing. I love that you helped that. Cause that, just by you helping that one chef, you were helping so many more like this, just it's the um, continued circle, right? The, the wave, the, the ripple. Um, I just want to remind everybody that your book is called the edgy veg cookbook, 138 carnivore approved vegan recipes. And even more than that, I want people to go check you out on your channel and get to know you and ask questions and have comments where, what is your channel called? It's called The Edgy Veg. So on YouTube, it's just youtube.com slash edgy veg. And on Instagram, it's the same thing, just at edgy veg. And the website is theedgyveg.com. 
and your website's really fun. You actually, um, I noticed that you you have done retreats, um, and I know they're probably on hold just for a little bit. But do you have plan on having more retreats coming up for people? Yeah, I mean, depending on how everything goes, we are supposed to have one in September, so we'll see. Going to Bali, eating our way Ooh. through Bali, doing some cooking classes with me and some surfing and traveling around and trying beautiful Indonesian vegan meals. So hopefully, fingers crossed, that's still happening. So far, it's still happening, but uh, oh. as we know, things can change in an instant. <laughs> yes, they can. And so can your eating ways. And so <laughs> I really want to thank you, Candice for being here with me today, sharing with me and actually inspiring me. I think I'm going to, I'm going to go for a few more, a few more uh, vegan recipes added because of you. So you've inspired me. Thank you so much. And I just, I, I know that you've changed people's lives even inspired them just by, by doing the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. Oh, it's been so much fun. All right, everybody, always tune in to Light on Living for some great interviews and really, you know what, shine the spotlight on the parts of life that you want to feel better. Okay, see you guys next week.